The disappearance of Madeleine McCann from a Portuguese holiday resort has baffled detectives for seven years now. Despite a long and very complex investigation involving hundreds of officers, there's been no trace so far of the little girl. Well, early today, I spoke to two investigative journalists, Anthony Summers and Robin Swan. They've spent two years poring over tens of thousands of Portuguese police files and have now released a book of their findings. I started by asking them what makes their book different from anything that's been previously published. What's new about our book is that we're the first people to actually stand back and take a look at all of the documents that have been released, analyze them properly, put them in order, and give the public, the reading public, something cogent about what might have happened to Madeline that night. Anthony, do you think you found things that the police have missed? Not that the police have missed exactly, but which law enforcement haven't taken advantage of. Um, there are something like, figures differ, but it's something like 20,000 pages of documents about the case that have been released in Portuguese and as well as some in English that, that are accessible. And we've been through every single one of those. And the result is that instead of the sort of hodgepodge and the, the rumor and the scattered reporting that's come out, that one has an actual picture of a sensible scenario of what may have happened. Do you think the investigators have done a good job? I think in 2007, there were mistakes made. Uh, in our book, Looking for Madeline, we document for the first time the British government's own report, their own critique of the mistakes that the British police agencies made that may have compounded uh, the problems that took place on the ground in Portugal and contribute to problems today in the relationship between the Portuguese and the British. Why no um, collaboration with uh, Madeleine's parents, Kate and Jerry McCann? I think it's all been so sensitive, the relationship in particular with the Portuguese police, that they didn't want to be seen to be contributing to any kind of a publicity effort at this point that might get up the noses of the Portuguese. We found absolutely nothing indicating that the parents were culpable of anything at all. Let's talk about your conclusions. First of all, what lessons can the authorities learn and also parents taking their children on holiday? I think in the end, the nub of what people will want to know about what we've put in this book, Looking for Madeline, is in the end what appears to have happened. And we've found a plausible scenario um, that indeed there were uh, sex attacks on children of British tourists and residents in the area over a period of time, that apartment 5A, the apartment the, the McCanns had, was um, itself a special target because it was vulnerable on two sides to the street, and that, that, um, that it was watched in the days and on the specific day that she disappeared, that it was watched, and that at that very time someone was going around claiming to be collecting for charity. Um, and, um, and it turns out that the orphanage he said he was collecting for did not exist. We'd been there, we've looked at it, it didn't exist. Finally, question to both of you. Do you still believe she's alive? Anthony first. The statistics we understand, such as statistics exist, suggest that of minors who disappear without an explanation or without a body being found within a, a brief period, 56%, surprise, 56% are, do in fact eventually, even many years later, turn up alive. Robin, what's your gut feeling? Well, Ernie Allen, who's the, perhaps the greatest expert on ch missing children in the world, says that no one has a right to take away the parents' hope. And in a world like this, this is such a rare event, it's a world of terrible dark imaginings, and parents do have a right to see this case, investigate it to the end, and find out the truth about what happened to their little girl. 